Hello, and in today's video we are going to talk about fitting an auto bed levelling sensor to the Ender 3. Whether you prefer to use a pre-made kit like these two here, or source the parts and build your own, the installation and setup process is very similar. If you live in America, TH3D Studios do several versions of auto bed levelling kits, all coming with precise instructions and firmware downloads available from the website. If you are living in the UK or Europe, my suggestion is you look at Skynet 3D Mod's eBay page. On there he has a pre-wired kit which also comes with great instructions and the firmware to download. Now both these kits will work perfectly well with your machine. The only difference of course is the delivery costs to your country. So if you are in the Americas, stick with TH3D Studios. If you are in Europe or the UK, you're probably better to go with Skynet 3D's version. With the TH3D Studios Easy ABL kit I have here, you just need to input your power from your power supply to the plus and the minus on this side here, and then your Z end stop switch connects to those two terminals there using the wire provided. With the Skynet 3D Mods kit, you just connect this plug to the Z end stop and this wire to the positive terminal on your power supply. So as you can see, both kits are very similar and their installation methods are very similar too. So let's go and pop one on the Ender 3 now. So with the lid removed from your control box, the Z end stop switch is the third one down from the top. Now as you can see, Creality have taken to using hot glue to hold these plugs in place so they don't come out during transportation. All it requires is a little leverage with a sharp knife to remove the glue and then simply lift the Z end stop out of the way and with your cable routed through the hole at the rear of the control box merely plug your Z axis switch into the socket we can now turn our attentions to the power supply this is removed by undoing these two bolts here remembering first to disconnect this plug situated at the rear of the machine. So with the power supply removed from the frame it is now just a matter of undoing these two bolts to remove the protective case from the power supply. At this stage I would remind you to make sure that your power supply is completely isolated from the mains. Now as you can see we have our live neutral and earth mains voltage in and then we have three negative terminals and three positive terminals for your 24 volts out. So we will be using the next terminal on the 24 volt plus, which on this is number two. If you are using the easy ABL uh, hardwired installation kit, you would also use the negative. But like I say, on the system that we're plugging in today, which is the Skynet's kit, we are only using the positive terminal number two there. So we will unscrew this, tighten in the terminal fitting and screw it back up again. So there we have the positive terminal connected and tightened into place. Now at this stage it's always good just to check the tightness of these other terminals that were uh, tightened at the factory just to make sure they haven't loosened in transit as they could cause arcs and sparks inside the casing. So just check all those screws, make sure they're tightened down sufficiently, close the lid and then do the reverse procedure to put your power supply back into its outer case and then mount it again on your printer. So with the power supply reinstalled and the two pin plug reconnected at the rear, we can now put the mains power back in, switch the machine on and do a rudimentary quick test to make sure that the sensor is actually getting power.
So a simple way just to test at this stage that the sensor is receiving power is to place your finger underneath it like so and if you see the red light come on on top of the sensor you will know that it is wired correctly. Now we can turn the power back off, remove the plug and now we'll set up the firmware and flash it to the machine. So with your probe correctly installed and wired in it's time to make some alterations to the firmware. If you haven't yet flashed the bootloader on your Ender 3, please refer to my earlier video in which I show you how to do that and also how to upload the firmware. So the firmware configuration of your ABL sensor is incredibly simple. You merely load your chosen firmware into Arduino, open the configuration H tab, scroll down until you find the Ender 3 options, find the probe mount that you have fitted to your Ender 3, mine is the Pets Fang. You uncomment the two forward slashes, like so, which is now defined the X and Y offset for the probe mount you have installed. And then it's just a matter of recompiling your firmware and re-uploading it to your printer. So at this stage we need to check that the firmware is seeing the sensor correctly. To do this you can use your slicer software, a small G-code program which is bundled with the firmware or Octoprint as I'm using. So making sure the sensor is above the bed so the light is not lit, enter the following G-code. M119 You will receive a report back showing that all three are open. Now place your finger directly underneath the sensor so the light comes on and resend the same code. So G28. M one one nine. This time you will see the report says that the Z stop has been triggered. This way you know that your sensor is working correctly. So the next step is to preheat the printer bed. If you print at several different temperatures, depending on the material you're printing with, select a middle figure between the highest and lowest print temperatures you use. For this demonstration I will heat the bed to 65 degrees. So with the bed now heating to 65 degrees you must lower the nozzle so it is approximately two millimeters above the bed. I have found that the cable ties that came with my Ender 3 are approximately one millimeter thick. So what I do is I fold that cable tie in half place it between the bed and the nozzle and carefully lower the nozzle towards the bed. I use 0.1 increments to do this to be certain that I don't crash the nozzle into the bed. So that is now set to approximately 2mm above the bed. It is now time to alter the sensitivity of the sensor. Now if your sensor is already on, as mine is, place your screwdriver in the adjuster screw at the top and turn it anti-clockwise until the light goes out. Once the light is out, slowly turn the adjuster screw in a clockwise direction until the light comes on. Do it a couple of times just to make sure you find the correct moment and that you get a good bright 
light, remove the screwdriver, making sure that the bulb does not flicker. If the bulb does flicker at this point, replace the screwdriver and turn it slightly more clockwise. So now we need to set the Z offset. I will leave a link in the description to a separate video on this, but I will run you through it quickly now. Now with the bed still heated, enter the G code G28 to home the sensor to the middle of the bed. As you can see, the probe is now in the center of the bed and it is raised the Z axis by five millimeters. So the first thing we must do is to lower the Z axis by five millimeters. So that will give us a zero distance on the Z. So to do that, into prepare, move axis, move Z axis, move it to one millimeter at a time and do minus increments to zero. Now at this point the printer thinks it is touching the bed with its nozzle. At this stage you want to find yourself a single sheet of A4 paper and place it between the nozzle and the bed. We are going to use this to judge the distance the nozzle is above the bed. Now slowly lower your Z axis using 0.1 millimeter steps while moving your piece of paper backwards and forwards until you feel the nozzle start to grip the paper between itself and the bed below. Only go in very small increments very slowly as of course not to crash the nozzle into the bed. It is also good to check that your nozzle is clean and has no residue of any filament upon it as this will alter the actual height that you set it to. As you can see at this point it is too tight so I go back one increment and now I am just getting a little bit there we are a little bit of resistance between the nozzle and the bed which of course is still heated. Now looking at my machine you will see that the Z movement is minus two millimeters. This is what my Z offset is. So now to set that Z offset you're going to control into motion and there is your Z offset and you need to set that to the minus figure that you had on your machine. Mine was minus two millimeters. So we turn the scroll wheel until we get to minus two millimeters. That's minus one. Minus two millimeters. And that is the Z offset set. Then you need to store that in memory. You go to control, store settings. That beep tells you that the settings are stored. So the Z offset will be set now, even when you reset or restart your machine. So you now send your printer another G28 code. And it will move to the center of the screen. It won't, it will move to the center of the bed. And as you can see, it has set itself on the Z now to seven, which means it now thinks it is seven millimeters above the bed, whereas before it was five millimeters above the bed. So that is your minus two, which is your Z offset. You can now try your first test print to see how you're level. Now you're ready to start printing using your auto bed leveling system. Please remember you may need to use the baby stepping Z feature to fine tune in your first layer height. There are inconsistencies in bed temperature and one thing or another which means I suggest you do check your baby stepping before every print. You don't always need to, 
but sometimes it's just better to fine tune that first layer. The final thing you will need to do is to update the start code in your slicer. This will tell the machine before every print to do an auto bed level. There are samples of this in both of the software packages but you can also set up your own. But remember, make sure the bed is heated before you do the auto bed leveling as the temperature of the bed will affect the proximity sensor. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and if you'd like to support me there are links to Patreon and Streamlabs in the description. Until the next video, thanks a lot, take care and goodbye now.